Welcome back. Hopes of an all-UK crewed space mission are growing, with astronaut Tim Peake helping to attract funding for a new mission into space. Axiom Space are hoping to launch a team from Florida with the goal of reaching the International Space Station. Let's go live now to our science correspondent, Thomas Moore, who is uh, with Tim Peake at the Farnborough International Air Show. Uh, take it away. It's fascinating here in the space zone how many companies are all in the space sector, many of them uh, to do with satellites, but some still anchored in human missions, but commercial human missions, and that has been the big change. It's not space agencies anymore, it is now commercial companies. And here is Tim Peake, recognisable face, of course, from one of those agency-sponsored missions, but now joining Axiom Space, uh, a joint mission that you'll be doing uh, with the UK Space Agency. So, Tim, you're the strategic advisor for this mission, trying to get it off the ground, and that is about rattling the tin, trying to get sponsorship. Absolutely. It's about helping Axiom Space and the UK Space Agency bring this mission together. It's a fantastic opportunity for the UK, very exciting, to be able to have an all-UK mission uh, with a science package. The call for the science has already went out early this year, and the UK Space Agency have had tremendous response from that. A great educational outreach package as well. So for the whole UK science industry, uh, and also as an inspiration for our younger generations, this mission is fantastic. So this will be for UK astronauts going to the International Space Station to do science and technology experiments. Who is going to want to sponsor that? Yeah, potentially to the International Space Station. That's, that's one of the options. In terms of sponsors, what's really exciting is companies that perhaps weren't uh, knowledgeable about space and didn't really have that on their profile have been very interested about now getting into space because of the opportunities that the space sector has available to them. So it could be traditional companies that already do research, for example, pharmaceutical companies, but it could be companies such as, as banking, for example, or in the entertainment industry um, that want to reach out and use space as an area to improve the opportunities for their companies. But this is going to cost somewhere north of £200 million. You're going to have to go into some pretty unusual sponsorship deals to, to make this happen. happen. Perhaps British companies who want to see their name, their uh, attached to uh, a space mission with a, with a Union Jack on it. Absolutely. Yes, it is a huge challenge, um, and that's something that we're going to hopefully rise to. Um, but the, the point of this is that it's the future of the space economy. Um, as the space agencies, such as NASA, ESA, UK Space Agency, part of that, we look further afield on the Artemis program, exploring the moon, potentially Mars and beyond. Commercialization of low Earth orbit is already happening. So we're just capitalizing on that and gaining interest from these companies. And with the International Space Station being decommissioned in 2030, it will you'll be dragged out of the atmosphere. The hope is that there will be a commercial lab that exists there in orbit with companies uh, like Axiom Space uh, still operating and, and taking commercial astronauts. Absolutely. Axiom Space are likely to be the first operators of the commercial space station after the ISS. Their first module is planned to launch in 2026. Um, so for us to be associated with them at this stage is great for the UK. But for a UK mission, if it does go to the International Station, as I'm told it almost certainly will, that is going to need a UK passport holder with an experience in space. There aren't many of those around, Tim, so are you going to be the commander of this mission? There aren't many around. Uh, we haven't selected the crew right now. At the moment, we're, we're looking at the commercial response aspect. But yes, if I was asked, then I, any astronaut you speak to who wants to have the opportunity to go back to space would say yes. So what would it mean for the UK space industry? Because it has excelled in satellites for so long. But to have a really strong leadership in human space mission. Um, how, how important is that? Yeah, I think it's hugely important. The, the space industry in the UK is doing phenomenally well, growing at four times the rate of the rest of the UK economy. But by having the human element of space exploration, it means that we, when we get involved in the Artemis program, and, and we have three other British ESA astronauts right now in training, which is amazing. Rosemary Coogan just graduated, John McFall, the first para-astronaut, and McGann Christian, a reserve astronaut, all selected by the European Space Agency at the last selection board. So by having this strong presence for UK space exploration. It means that that filters down as an industrial return to the rest of our space industry, being able to get involved in contracts. So even though robotics and satellites are becoming ever more capable, you believe there is still a value in putting humans into space, even though it's more expensive? 
Absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt. I know this is an argument that's gone on for a long period of time, but robotic explorations are very important. They de-risk the human missions. They pave the way. But they're getting more complex, they're getting more expensive, and there's only so much you can do with a robotic mission. One human on the surface of Mars could do more than the, the Mars rovers could do in, in three or four years. There is risk with humans in space. We've seen that with Boeing and the two astronauts currently on the International Space Station. How do you feel about them with no prospect of coming home? I think they've got plenty of prospects for coming home. Um, I, I, I know Butch and Sonny very well. But no date on for, for Boeing actually getting them back? Yes, but there are lots of contingency plans available. When we launch to space, we know that we have options available to us. The International Space Station is a fantastic hub. It has plenty of food, plenty of water, plenty of resources. Um, I was up there with Scott Kelly spending a year in space. Um, so the crew are completely safe, and I know that the space agencies will be working on a safe return option for them. But every astronaut has to consider the risks involved in human spaceflight. It's something we do. It's something we're passionate about, and that's some, a process that you have to go through as an individual and be comfortable with. Tim Peake, thank you very much indeed. So that really interesting that uh, a possible UK mission could be happening and I'm told it could happen as early as the end of next year, perhaps the beginning of 2026.